genetically uh, always had a great chest and, you know, it had no problem growing. Uh, but not once in my life or in my career did I think I need not to train chest anymore, you know, or my chest is good enough or it's big enough. You know, you're never good enough. You're never big enough. You only are if you're settled and you don't want to go any further. Other than that, you keep pushing on. You know, you make your weaknesses your strengths and you make your strengths even better. And I have to say, the first person that ever, you know, gave that impression to me, like that's an important body part, was my brother. Um, he had a very thick and dominating chest and uh, everybody, you know, around town and school definitely uh, looked at him as the, one of the thicker, bigger guys walking around. <clears throat> There's one thing getting locked in a position. There's another getting locked in a position on the angle, you know, and then you have to compensate for that angle that the machine creates for you, where this one's more straight up and down, and it creates a real life, you know, uh, the way you train with free weights. You know, you can set yourself up and do your normal, uh, normal form without adjusting. So I like this a whole lot better. <clears throat> a lot of people look at equipment and say, I'm not using that because I don't want it to help. I mean, really? The only help that you're getting is helping you from crushing your small joint, you know? Instead of being, trying to have a big ego, put on your wrist wraps, protect yourself, so then you're not concentrating on the weight crushing your wrist, you're concentrating on the exercise and getting done in the muscle you actually want to build. <laughs> When you're in the gym, use the whole gym. Use the dumbbells, use the machines, use the free weights. This is a perfect example of using a Smith machine and how important it is. Because when you're in here without a workout partner, you can still go heavy and feel safe. If you can't get the weight or you get stuck halfway through, there's enough kicks here to where you can hook it safely and get out from underneath of it. This is one of my favorite exercises. Dumbbell, flat bench, press. One of the most important things in doing this exercise is, I know some people may do it on bench press and stay more conscious about it, but they don't when they do dumbbell press. And that's when they grab the weight and lay back to perform the exercise as they leave your feet just out in front of them, you know, and not use all the power in your body. You must always bring your feet back, set your feet up in alignment with your hip. So then you can use your legs to help press while performing the exercise. It's that whole kinetic chain. You know, you set your feet, you set a good base, press from your legs, up through your body. So much more power. Woo! The isometric bench press is one of the exercises I like to sprinkle in, you know, every so often. One of the things that I like about it, it helps the sticking point. From your chest to midpoint is where you have the most power. From midpoint, to all the way up is where the struggle begins. So in saying that, this helps your body get to the midpoint and helps your mind and your body connect and figure out what muscles need to fire off, you know, when you're at this point. So then when you're bench pressing normal, you bring the bar down and it's just like a spring winding up, winding up, getting tighter, getting tighter, getting tighter. And when you get down to your chest, when you spring up, instead of getting stuck at midpoint, 
your body is all kicking off, firing off, and you go straight through, you know, to the top. So it's an excellent exercise for you to get past the plateau, get past the sticking point during your bench press when you get to a certain weight. Number two, because of the press and the pressure and the time under tension that you're giving your, your body, the pump, the rush of blood, you know, in these major body parts that you're training, you know, is, it's, is so much. You just get a huge, uncontrollable pump in your body. Uh, so important, you know, as a bodybuilder, uh, as a power lifter, and as an athlete, the feel, you know, the exercise that you're doing is uh, doing the most and you're benefiting the most knowing that you're getting closer to your goal. So important to, to get the right exercises, perform the right exercises to get you past your sticking points, to get on stage, to get to the winning circle. I like doing incline alternating bench press because it's so important uh, to give each side of your body a chance to adjust and to perform at its highest level. And so once in a while, I sprinkle in doing individual or alternating presses like this. So, I mean, it helps the tendons, the ligaments, also uh, all your stabilizing muscles um, as well, strengthen them because uh, you have to balance the weight on the one arm that you're not performing the exercise as well as concentrate on keeping the dumbbell in line when bringing it down and bringing it back up and performing the exercise. Ooh. Ooh. Uh. Uh. Yep. 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 Oh yeah. I love doing the cable crossovers and dips as a superset. But you gotta do dips with chains, just saying. Anyway, it's one of the hardest, more defining exercises that you can do, combination that you can do. Um, so I like it, because like I said, it puts, you gotta do at least one exercise to put some pressure on it. And uh, this combination here, definitely a do it. You definitely don't want to give your body any choice but the change. So this combination, I'll definitely do it for you. So try it out. Uh, hopefully, hopefully it works for you. Uh, if it doesn't, I don't know what to tell you because it works for me. See you next time. That's reality for your ass. And that's how it's done. Doesn't get no better than that, baby.